is the hydrant that started the entire business when Steve talked about his dad working for a competitor and having some changes that he wanted to make and the competitor uh, didn't want to listen. He thought, I can do this. So this is the Eddie Flow hydrant and that's what started the whole business. And this hydrant, um, not just because I'm a salesperson, but because of the fact of the patent on the plunger, the way it's made, um, you can stop the handle at any point. The only thing on this hydrant that we have changed since 1949 is the shape of the handle. And that is it. So when you don't change a product for that long, uh, it works. So and the only reason we changed the shape of the handle to that bigger one is farmers were telling uh, Noel at the time and Steve then later that their gloved hands didn't fit very well in this one. So. And this handle can replace this one because there's still ones, we have them on our family farm that are 48 years old and still working working fantastically. So um, just to give you an idea of how well we manufacture the pitless units, and I won't go into all the technical aspects, but if you are familiar with wells at all, you drill your well, you have the pump down below where the water is, we have a variety of pitless units that Steve has a number of patents on and that we manufacture right here also. The hydrants and the pitless units are all manufactured right out here um, in Storm Lake, Iowa. Basically, everything from a pump up, we offer here at Merrill, whether we manufacture it or we bring it in as an accessory product. Or product. So we have like 2,500 different SKUs that are accessories to what we manufacture that we offer here that Steve has grown um, when he first came on board and started. And I don't, this is Steve's wife, Jackie, I think. <laughs> I <laughs> <laughs> she is a huge part of the business. Yeah, we love, we love having Jackie when she comes in. So, um, but one of the things that when Steve came on to work with Noel, his dad, um, they had just a very small catalog, just a few items. And it's been Steve that has brought, that has built the, you know, into, we were exporter of the year one year, um, and, but he has grown the business to offer all of the accessories at all, as well, which we do have those made overseas, a lot of them, the, the smaller parts, but they're made to his specifications at specific foundries to, to our specifications. So, um, but with that being said, that's, that's the main our main, claim, our main claim to fame is our hydrants, and we have the largest hydrant line for different applications. All hydrants are gonna work basically the same way, but Steve has a number of patents here also, um, and these are hydrants for different needs or different wants. So this is the Cadillac. The Anyflow is the best model that we have. It just has the most features. Then the C1000 is our top seller. And that is basically because of a price point. Um, you know, you've got your farmers. You've got if you're going to have a hydrant and you're going to use it hard and use it constantly. And if you're in Iowa, where you're digging down six feet to your frost line to put them in, then you're going to spend a little more money. If you're somebody that's just going to use it to wash your car on the weekends, you know, you're just looking for a solid model that's still going to last um, the same amount of time, but it's just a little more economical. And then. We have the R6000s, just another model, incredibly easy to open because of the design and self-closing for campgrounds and stock tanks. You press them down and they, they come on. And it's it, we have heated hydrants. We have hydrants that the top comes mm -hmm. off. You can mow over them, cap them off like on a golf course. So if there's any hydrant need, we, we have it covered here. So. Um, I could talk product for days, <laughs> literally. So I'm not going to bore you with everything. I'm happy to answer any questions, you know, as we go. Um, we have a team of five inside salespeople that work for Merrill over here in the old bank building. Um, one works remote, and then we also work with um, outside partners that cover the field. So they'll have multiple lines, but they'll rep Merrill. But the nice thing is, is our wholesalers that we sell through, that's that's where the bulk of our business is, is to wholesalers who go to contractors and drillers. Um, but we have recently branched off uh, one of Jackie, uh, Joel, Jackie and Steve's son, he handles the e-commerce and we've branched into Amazon 
and online sales, which has been um, really taken off and grown very, very quickly. But he's handling that. So, but the bulk of our, our customers are wholesalers and they have one point of contact. So every wholesaler has the same territory manager. We have them split up by area. So when they call in, they're getting the same human being. And, and in the industry with our competitors, that's one of the big, the big things that we hear is we love that when we call there, I'm talking to Nancy or I'm talking to, you know, and they always get a human being. So, so that's something we pride ourselves into. And that kind of leads into the people segment, which I'll let Ophelia kind of talk a little bit more about that. We, we kind of joke because, you know, um, Terry is probably one of the most passionate employees in our company. And just her passion, really, you know, you can really feel it. And when we talk about products, she's, she's the, the best and, and steam, of course. Yeah, but yeah, um, yeah we, we currently have about 62 employees uh, who are part of our company. And one of the things that I think um, really di differentiate us from the rest of the manufacturing companies, uh, not just in the Storm Lake area, but like in the state of Iowa, is that we have been able to create a fle true flexible schedule for our employees in our plant. So we have uh, very long-term employees with the company. Some of them are celebrating 47, 48 years with Merrill Manufacturing, and that really speaks to you know the culture, speaks to the, to the type of company that we are. And uh, um, so our employees at the plant, you know, they, they, they set up their own schedules. So we, we have a 40-hour work week, and they, they decide, you know, do we want to do three 12-hour days and then come here and work for four hours and finish after 40 hours? Do we want to do four 10-hour days? So they do have the true flexibility to do that, and our employees absolutely love that. Love that. It's I give a lot of I give a lot of credit to our operations team. So K Caitlin is our operations director, senior operation directors, and she is just works with you know the the plant manager and our warehouse manager, and they work magic to be able to, to be able to provide this this uh, benefit to our employees, which they really really appreciate. Um, so also something that we really um, are proud of is our core values and. Uh, talk about passion so one of our core values is passion for all we do <laughs> and um we have two we have three terries in the company we have three terries. Well, okay so we have three terries of, of the in the company and two of those terries are just super super passionate about um the yes. fitness units and that's terry here and then we have our terry who actually makes the product and uh, we, we recognize our employees every every quarter uh we we have a program called a shout out program so we just recognize employees and give shout outs to employees that do things that, you know, really show our core values. And Terry was nominated for, <laughs> please remind me, but... For being passionate <laughs> about Pitless. And yes. Like, which Terry? <laughs> yes, which Terry? And then um, they went on to describe what, how, what he does to show his passion. So every time he's expecting an order, he goes and he worries and picks out and then he runs and then he comes back and then he asks, you know, our shipping department, like... Where is this shipping order? And then he goes and then he gets excited about it. And then he goes freaks out again. So it's just kind of the, to, to this family of the culture. Been here 30 some years. Yeah. So I'm short term. Yeah, and our employees are just they're just kind. They're very family oriented. You know, the flexibility really works with you know the younger or the new employees that are joining the company, such as myself. And I mean, Kayla has been with the company to five years, but we have young families. So being able to work for a company that provides the flexibility, allow us to go to our games, our kids, kids events, and things like that. That is that is huge. Yeah. So we're very proud of you know that, that the fact that Merrill has the ability to do that, offer that to us employees. Yeah. So um, continuing with our <laughs> with our core values. Um, so passion for what we do, doing the right thing. Can do, will do, done. So that's just promoting. Um, uh, you know, kind of getting things done, and we before me that's teamwork, and then we just recently got together and um, just review, kind of spend some time talking about our core values, how they evolve, and what they actually, 
what they actually are today. So we changed the part of the solution to solving problems together because that really truly represents um, our culture. Yeah. We work very well between shipping, production, um, and sales. Yeah. I think one of the things that we promote the most is like in the sales department, I don't care how much we sell, if they don't produce it and shipping doesn't ship it, it means nothing, you know. And so we really at Merrill promote to respect every department. You know, we don't ever say, oh, that department's behind. No, what can we do to help? And I think that, you know, I think that resonates a lot with employees because, like, we have, we have a lot of long-term employees. Um, our tenure has come down a little bit because they're starting to retire. You know, we're starting to get to that. <laughs> To that age, so like the um, great tsunami. <laughs> That's what yeah, I call it. The great yeah, tsunami. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so yeah. So but but what's fun is is the new people that we have coming in. Um, they seem they seem it's a it's a mixture of older people and younger people, and it's really it seems to really be working. And so what 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 we're doing seems to be seems to be working very well. Mm -hmm. Um, so, do you have any questions for us? Anything that you want to know about Merrill, the culture, the products? When you when you have open positions, how long does it take you to find a qualified candidate that you want to be a member of your team? That's a great question. We don't have a lot of openings. Um, most recently, we had a couple of um, sales territory managers. So these are people that report to Terry, and it took us about two months to find them. But one of the things that um, happened through the process, uh, we receive a lot of applications and a lot of applicants, but we're, we're gonna bring those that we think are gonna be the right fit and they're gonna be here for, you know, for for the long run. So, so we were pretty, we were, we were, we're pretty selective, I guess, on, um, you know, just not just bringing anybody, just bringing someone, and not just for the sales team, for the whole company. What it takes to mm -hmm. train somebody, yeah. and and so yeah, we really took our time. I yeah, can only speak for those uh, two positions, but we interviewed a lot of people, and um, I'm going to say we're we're one month in, and I'm super super happy with with both choices. So mm -hmm. yeah, but we, but we did have a lot of applicants, mm -hmm. and we do have a lot of applicants, and I I don't know you know for other industries. Um, I spent the last six years of my career with a uh, rural cooperative, um, not an electric cooperative, but just an agricultural cooperative. And um, the challenges that, that we had uh, being in rural Iowa, you know, was different than, than like Merrill Manufacturing being in Storm Lake. Um, we're seeing a lot of applications, and I, I don't know if, you know, the labor market is going to turn it around. Uh, I know there was some... Some towns that are surround, surrounding us, like Lawrence, you know, they they let go, you know, like laid off 50 some employees. So those employees are from our local community. So they, you know, they start applying to places like ours. So yeah, very, very thankful that we were just able to, that we have a pool of applicants and that we're, we just get the luxury to be selective, I guess. And I think that we've, mm -hmm. um, I'm more the old school, of course, where I always thought you had to walk in the door on time and you had to work until it was time. And my old habits, I'm still the first one here and the last one to leave because that's just me. But I think that we have discovered um, to get the really the, the cream of the crop and stuff, we have to, we had to say, okay, you know, if once you've learned the position and you're very well, we have an Iowa State graduate that did an internship and we hired her in sales and her husband took a job up um, with the hog house operation up there, right on the Minnesota border. And so the only way we were going to keep her is to let her work remote. And we did, and I've never been happier. I mean, she she's Johnny on the spot. She's available on team. She's doing her job. You know, I think it just it became for a lot of us older ones to realize that there's some different values now. People, you know want a better balance and we were flexible enough to to accept that and do that mm -hmm. and you know it, it, may, it maybe doesn't always work it's not going to work for everybody but mm -hmm. it certainly has worked has worked for us how long have you done the flexible schedules the plant has been since way before my time 
they've always been oh, incredibly really? flexible. Yeah. Um, they, Jackie, do you remember when they weren't flexible on their schedule? I don't remember when they weren't. Wow. Yeah. Maybe back to Noel's days, which was in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the plant has always, you know, they have times when, you know, we have busy seasons here, obviously, when you're, you know, in the during summer, the summer, spring, spring. and summer, mm-hmm. um, that they will have to work a little overtime or maybe they have to come in, but they have it. And again, we're going to give credit to Caitlin and, and the, the plant stuff. managers and stuff. They keep it scheduled and they keep an eye on production very well. And as long as they're producing everything we're selling and we're getting it out. But, but yeah, we've been doing that way before that being flexible was cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Do you guys allow overtime then too? If they if they're efficient in their forty hours, can they continue to come in over during overtime? certain times? Of the if they work to do it, if, if uh, overtime is justified, yeah. definitely yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm with Joe. I'm surprised. I figured that was something, something you guys just, because that really is cutting edge stuff now. That all these large employers are really trying to figure out ways to get employees a yeah. flexible schedule. Or something. People are trying yeah. to figure out. So kudos to you guys. Be way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I said, I, I, it's been that way since I started. Yeah. I know. So. And a newer thing I think is this remote, you know, remote positions. Um, out of sixty-two employees, we have seven that are remote. You know, they we like to bring them uh, when we have a special event so that we can like you know see them. But you know, they're they're very talented. And if we if it wasn't because we have this remote uh, option. We would be, um, you know, missing out on good talent because we do have a lot of talented employees that work remotely for us. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's it's an adjustment and it's a change, and it takes you know some time to get to the point where like um, fully accepted and yeah. So yeah, any other questions? Great questions, by the way. Are you going to be hit with an influx of retirements? I think we've been experiencing that nice slowly. Kind of been experiencing that a little yeah. bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've had um, we lost two salespeople that had been here um, upper thirty years, and the plant the plant we're going to have probably what uh, probably four, out of twenty five we'll have about five four that five. are going to go that are very key employees with a mm-hmm. lot of knowledge. Mm-hmm. So yeah. mm-hmm. um, so the hope is. Uh, that they're passing that off, you know, right. to the ones that they're they're working with, and I think that that's something that they've been focusing on, Caitlin and Adam on also is because there's it's like Steve he forgets more, and Dave he forgets anything that any of us will know the whole time we're here, you know, and it's kind of the same when if I have something that stumps me, I can go back to Terry Flanagan who's been here 46 years building the stuff, and he'll he'll be like, oh yeah. Forty years ago, there was this guy that did install a hydrant, and it was this situation. I haven't tried tweaking this, and it's like, okay, and it works, you know. So, so there's a lot of valuable knowledge, but I think I think the training and the docu, the other things, documentation. We're trying to move. We moved into a new ERP system, which we older people lived through, and I still hear talk about it. Yeah, it was, but. At first, you know, we think, well, this is dumb. Why do we have to record this stuff? This is, I know, I know what it is. But then when you start thinking about that, the knowledge. So we have really made a conscious effort lately to, and I'm sure in the years to come, is really document, document, document. And um, we're going to launch a new CRM for the salespeople that will help document even further. But, um, you know, I think we're all realizing that all of us aren't going to, you know, we're, we're planning for the future, I guess, because Merrill's going to continue to grow. Right? Yeah. We've shown that Steve wants to double it again mm-hmm. here in the next 10 years. So, um, And something else, too, that I'm going to speak of my own experience that I, um, I've experienced through my interviewing process with Merrill is that even though we're a smaller manufacturing company, uh, our vice president, Matt, which is uh, Steve's son, he is very technology-driven. And mm-hmm. he's very, you know, very like, he's always looking for what's the best thing out there that we can, you know, utilize and make our job easier, jobs easier. I think we utilize, like, we have so much, so much cool technology, like, to do our jobs. And, like, in the HR department, I was super, super pleased with all the technology that I have 
available to me to make my job easier and I spend my time instead of doing a lot of paperwork in my office I'm spending my time with the things that I love to do which is say you know spending time with with our employees and doing cooler things <laughs> I guess yeah but we do uh, you know our ERP systems like um, Terry mentioned a CRM um, so super cool okay. yeah. Any other questions? I don't know. I remember playing with those things on my cousin's farm. And I was like, yeah, like cool was saying, we always yell that for leaving it wide open. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys are supposed to shut that door. Yeah, but they have a, now they have a thing where they can put, like, lock them back and lock them there. <laughs> you go into community parks sometimes, you see those things just yeah. fall apart. Yeah. Right. yeah, we had them on our farm growing up, and then I left and came back, and and applied here because I was wanting to look back and it was like, holy cow, I've worked with half of this stuff on the field growing up. But. And one of the things that like blows, like I just, uh, I don't understand, but you know, they, they last for so long, like Terry mentioned, they last for, you know, 40, 45 years and we're producing so many per week and they're like, being sold and you know where are they going? <laughs> We're in busy season on this, during the summer before we have shipped over two thousand a day out. So, so this is just crazy. Yeah. And then we ship, you know, that one of the other things is we ship, you know, globally. So we have Canada, we have uh, France, we have France, mm-hmm. Poland, Turkey, um, Mexico. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and so yeah, there's a whole lot of a lot of yard hydrants over in France. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. So that's very interesting too. The one lady I mentioned that graduated out of state and worked for Mo handles all of our our export countries, and and that's been a learning experience also. Uh, you know, when we branched into that, but but yeah, it's really it's it's just it's neat that we're here in Storm Lake, Iowa. You know, still, and we stay here. And, you know, we do shows. Steve and I do shows, and it's just people. They love, you know, they're like, really? You're still, you're all, your plant is still there? You're saying it's like, yeah. So, so yeah. It's, well, I think it was a good place to live. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for your time. And thank I think you're ready to transition. So. Are you guys ready to go on a tour? Sure. <laughs> okay, I have a couple of hard hats here. If you guys, if you don't want them, that's more.